everyone. Um, welcome to our talk today. My name is Leslie Moody Castro, and I am here from in Austin, Texas, um, invited by Tally Dunn and crew to have a conversation with Arely. Um, Arely, I'll let you introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Arely Morales, and I currently live in Nacogdoches, Texas. Um, and, and yeah, I'm excited for this opportunity to have this chat with Leslie. And Arely, um, we're here because of you, really. Um, <laughs> because you have your first solo exhibition at Tally's Gallery, and it's up right now. Um, how long is it up? And can you give us a little bit of background on the exhibition? Yes. So this show is up till, I believe, the first of May, like the very beginning of May. So we have this month uh, coming up of April and what's left of March. And the body of work that is in the show, it's, um, it's work that I've done in the, I would say the last three, four years um, in my career. And it's a body of work that um, it's mainly um, portraits that relate to labor and specifically immigrant labor in the United States. And it's, um, yeah, so if you, if you haven't seen the show, go see it. Um, I think um, um, it's, it's, there's many things about it that can uh, truly be appreciated, I feel, in person. So if you haven't seen the show, yeah, go see the show. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just a body of work of portraits of immigrant laborers. And we'll talk a little mm -hmm. bit more about it. Um, but one of the things I'm really interested in is your, your biography as well. Um, uh, you are not originally from Nacogdoches. Can you tell us where you're from and how long you've been in Nacogdoches? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I'm, I come from um, Mexico, <laughs> from this, uh, from, yeah, from Mexico, the state of Jalisco. Um, and uh, I grew up in a town called Tlajomulco de Zuniga, Jalisco. It's a, it's a little town that's like 30 minutes away from the city of Guadalajara, which is like really, really nearby there. And that's kind of where I grew up. I moved to the United States when I was 14 years old, the year 2005. And I moved specifically to the town of Nacogdoches, Texas, which is this the state that I currently, I mean, the, the town that I currently live in as well. And I've been here for, um, well, this year will be 16 years, 16 years um, that I've been I, living here. Because you've seen so many of the like radical shifts of the United States, like from the Obama administration to the Trump administration, and then like all of like the domino effects politically of, of things that have happened because of that. Um, and so you live in Nacogdoches, but you went to Washington State University, am I correct? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then I remember when we initially had our first conversation, you um, you mentioned that the move from Nacogdoches to Washington State was also, was another sort of cultural learning experience about United States culture and history in general. Um, can you tell us uh, the effect that that had on you from going from Texas, Nacogdoches, small town Texas, <laughs> to right. Washington State, the Northeast? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and that happened in 2015 when I moved to, to Seattle to, to do a grad program there in the University of Washington. And um, I've never been away from Texas since I moved to Texas. So I've been here for many years by the time I, I left there. And uh, moving there was was very different, a very different experience to my eyes um, of being in the United States and going to another state that right away was, um, I think it was very welcoming. I would say in a way, um, me coming from a minority group, I feel that um, for, for one, I was very blown away by the diversity of the, the state and especially being in Seattle. There's so many cultures, uh, you know, in the surroundings and it was just very, I, I've never experienced that in the United States. So it was very interesting to me. And um, also with the work that I do, um, which has to do with immigration, I think, um, I felt very supported um, as I was starting to develop the work that I do. And that to me was, I think, very, very interesting. Not that I didn't feel supported in Texas, but I think um, being in Texas and um, reflecting on my identity and who I was, I think it, 
from my perspective, it was just a little bit more frightening. Um, so moving to Texas, I think I felt more secure and comfortable sharing who I was. Um, so that's something that uh, was very interesting to me moving from one state to okay. another. Did, so did that really influence um, the nature of the sort of autobiographical work um, when you moved to Seattle to go to, to grad school? Um, yes and no. Um, and I say no because I already when I was here in Texas, I was already kind of like making work that related to my story. Um, it was just in a very different angle, very different perspective. Um, the work that I was doing when I was uh, here still in Texas, it was mainly more about my heritage and like celebrating aspects of of that and my roots. It was very more of a celebration and kind of reconnecting with like my traditions that I loved and just aspects of my culture that I really loved. Um, but moving to Seattle, Washington, I think that opened up other doors that I never thought of opening. Um, I think my work um, became not just about me, but also about my community. And it started to respond as well as uh, to the political climate and how in that time I was being affected, um, I say, as, you know, as an immigrant, uh, as well as my community. So I think it, it was just two different angles to my identity. And yeah. yeah and so suddenly the, the fear kind of, the fear to sort of tackle those those issues of like labor, immigration, identity um, sort of kind of fell by the wayside and you were really looking at that in the work. Yes, yes, yeah. This, um, around that time, there was so much going on in relationship to, to immigration. Um, at the time, I was also a DACA recipient. Um, so all of this was going on and I think that really influenced so much anything I did after I moved <laughs> out of Texas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 That was, I mean, that time politically was just so, ugh, there was so much happening in the United States in terms of immigration. And it was, it was almost like a ping pong of, you know, what's happening. Yeah. yeah. It was like, we couldn't keep up. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, yeah, it was like that. And, uh, you know, from what I recall from those years, it was just so much uncertainty, um, uncertainty, fear, and also like, um, in a way, I feel that I was also experiencing a little bit of anger towards uh, just being targeted so openly and like, you know, like, uh, growing up as an immigrant here in the United States when I was like in high school when I started college it was like something that was we knew it was present but it just wasn't so open so in the air in in the way it was just like it was just too much too much going on um, at that time and I also remember when you and I first talked um that at, you you talk a little bit about the process of going through DACA and about that moment where you had to give your information to the government, which I don't think people understand. Like that moment is like such a scary moment because you're actually putting it on paper that you are undocumented in the United States. And so if things don't go well, then you are actually putting yourself at risk for being deported, which is a really right. scary prospect. Um, can you... And, and this does relate to the work, but so can you talk a little bit about that process? Yes, yes. Um, so when Kama came, uh, when Daka came around, I was just like, like just talk with my friends that we kind of qualified for it. And we were like, uh, I don't know if I should do it. We were like all scared and we were questioning like, should we do it? Should we not do it? Because we, you know, first in versus like, oh yes, we can, we can uh, get a work permit. That's awesome. But then it's like, oh yeah, but then you have to, you know, display all this information, all these records. Um, I was a minor as well. And also like, there's questions that relate to your parents, mm -hmm. to, you know, like your address. You know, and it's like, oh, like it was just this very hard decision to 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 do also because it was a two year 
working permit. So it wasn't even guaranteed that after those two years, you will be able to renew it. We didn't know if it will be like um, something that would last for a long time or, you know, would it change with the next administration? So, uh, yeah, so it, it was a really tough decision to make. Um, it was like, you know, like in, in one way you feel very optimistic and really excited, very happy to to kind of qualify for something like that. But in the other way, it was like, it was the opposite. It was kind of frightening to, to apply. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then with the applications, so you're, you get two years and then do you have, did you have to renew? Yes. Change. <laughs> yeah, no, so, um, so I think it stayed pretty stable like for the next four years maybe. So yeah, so like after two years you have to reapply you know, there's fees involved. So every two years you have to apply, you have to apply. And then also like, if you already have a job, it's like, you know, if you don't renew it on time, you kind of lose your job. Driver's license for at least for the state of Texas, um, once I was able to give my driver's license, they would only give it to you for the extent of that work apartment. So every two years, like new driver's license, new photo. And it's like, you know, having to keep track every two years, every two years. And I mean, through the years, um, you know, at some points it also got stopped, you know, that guy. And then also um, there's some qualifications towards, I, I can't remember top of my head because they've been like changing and back and forth, back and forth. But I, I remember at one point, like um, there's a lot of kids that just didn't qualify to apply for it, you know, that they were still in high school, but they just didn't qualify for it. And I think now it's back to open to receive more applications. So, yeah, so it's been quite a while. To yeah, it's, it's a ping pong back and forth, back and forth. We never know what's going to happen next year. We never know what will happen at the end. We're still kind of like in the limbo, you know? Yeah, and I think what's interesting, I mean, if to pull something out, like what I've seen a little bit in the work in the paintings and the way that you talk about your work is like this moment of limbo of like this, um, of not ever having the privilege of stability. Um, and, and I can't even imagine that like that, that sentiment of just not having the privilege of stability, you know, and just constantly living your life in these like two year markers. Um, and I want to shift a little bit. So the, and I see that in the work and I see that because you're, you are telling, you are painting the scenes and the stories of people that you know in this work, if I'm correct. Yeah. Yeah, so people that mm -hmm. around you, um, your friends, family. Um, can you talk a little bit about, um, about their reactions to seeing the paintings and how they, right. how they like interpret them when they see themselves on canvas? Yeah, yeah. You know, um, that aspect of my work of making paintings and then having, you know, them see kind of like the final result. Um, I think it's always very touching because I, they're always very excited. You know, it just brings this joy. It's like, oh, man, I'm in a painting. I'm in the gallery. I made it to the museum. So that to me is very special because, you know, like um, just through history, we haven't been you know, many museums probably, like in just, yeah, in this scale, in this, uh, you know, in this kind of representation. And I feel that it's just, it's always very positive and very, you know, warming to to, to my heart to kind of see their reactions because they, they just feel very special to, to be in those paintings. Yeah, I mean, even mm -hmm. what you're saying, like um, to be represented in a space like this, you know, a white cube, which traditionally is not welcoming to women or people of color historically, you know, since modernism. And then when we look at the history of art history, like painting is one of the most classical mediums that exist. So the insertion of these stories into that history, I think is incredibly important. Um, and I wanna actually elaborate on that a little bit more if you're okay with it. Um, just this idea of like inserting these stories and the stories of people into the classical history of painting, um, I think is such a, a subversive move. Um, and at the scale in which you're doing it is really impressive. So can you talk a little bit about why, why painting um, specifically just as a medium? Mm -hmm. um, okay, um, yeah, so in regards to why painting, I feel that 
one is kind of like my preference I feel that um, I, I I just love the process of working with paint so there's that aspect of it that I really enjoy um, but I, I also reflect a lot on on just like the the history of it and how through through years through history it's been very well used to depict you know like people of high importance or like yeah you know like back in the days like um I was uh, I was very blown away for example with um periods of art like the like between the renaissance and the baroque where um there's just this beautiful depictions of figures and they're just so majestic and uh and like for example I I I really connected with Caravaggio at one point because of the choices of his models and how he was just like everyday people in my studio and I and I think that kind of started my curiosity of like yes like why not you know like uh, there's all these beautiful people around us and and I feel that that kind of has led on into making me very conscious of just the power that portraiture has and the power of painting itself it's a very powerful medium through history and I think it still continues to be very very powerful so I kind of like um kind of the medium of art history yeah <laughs> That's the thing. Like, i mean when i when i talk with photographers that that, that have their studio visits and they're doing portraiture i'm like oh well you need to look at port like painting like mm -hmm. the medium of art history and i think it's interesting that you reference caravaggio because he was like art world bad boy for attempting to like, abridge the gaps between like the wealth um the, the class of wealthy people and the class of not wealthy people by yeah normal people in his paintings and so he was even sort of subverting these traditions very early on in the Baroque um and now that you say that I actually see that reference yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um so when what was that moment where you decided like uh, like I'm gonna put my mom in a painting <laughs> you know like what, what was that that singular moment where you made that decision to do a photo or a portrait of someone that was like really pivotal in your life I think um, probably like within my first year of my graduate program in Seattle, I feel that before I, I painted myself like in self-portraits, um, thinking of my undergrad work, that was very celebratorial of my traditions, my heritage. But then when, once I was in Seattle, once all of this was going on, it, it was just very moving to me to just think like, I like I very I was very aware of my feelings the struggles that I was going through but then I started to think like you know I'm not alone there's my whole community is going through the same thing and I think it was um, when I started really to to think and like you know what I don't want to just talk about me um, but I really want to understand and learn and reach out to others in my community there being my mom being my friend um, being you know just um, anyone in my community and I think um, I started to to become very interesting on um, is it like domestic labor like um, like cleaning in houses and all of that because I started to meet women that that was their their job and talking to them and uh, having opportunities to see them in person, like just carrying themselves around, you know, their daily tasks, cleaning here and there. That really, to me, that was like, it's just, they're, they're, so, they're so strong. These women are so strong. I just really want to share that with my viewer. You know, I think that is, there's a beauty, there's a strength. There's this very strong power within this in these people in my community, and I think it was within that time that I was, you know, looking and speaking to others in my community when I really it was just like that turning point to me. It's interesting too because not only like are you referencing Caravaggio and the fact that you are inserting like labor into the work and normal people into the work, but it's also women, which is a, like a massively subversive move. Like you're putting women back into the history of art history and women as laborers, women that do work. Um, and I think that's also, that's really, really interesting. Um, and it's, it's really, the, the paintings are gorgeous. And unfortunately I haven't been able to see them in person yet. 
Um, but I want to talk about scale a little bit. So I'm actually also looking at Tally's website right now as we're talking and um, the installation of the of the work is really gorgeous because you have I mean you're really like you're really flexing in the show like you have these massive large scale paintings that are so detailed and so well done and then you've got these like little babies that are like super mm -hmm. tiny um, and so I want to talk I want to ask you a little bit like talk to me about scale because you obviously like to work big, but you are such a talented painter that you can go between the two. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, so about the scale, right? So I, you know, th there's th there's been different different experiences or moments that have made me consider just the the large scale. At one point, um, again, going back to like our history, I was. One, I think the artist that have, have has moved me the most was Vernini. And uh, even though I haven't seen his work in person, but from what I've been able to read here and there and see the photos, it's just, um, I really appreciated the scale of his work and how, um, from my understanding, like a lot of his sculptures, they feel like they're existing within one space because of the scale, because of the movement and, they really take over, you know, uh, the experience of someone walking into a room, and I think that has always sticked with me. It's like I want my figures to feel like they're there, like you you see them and you feel them, and you know they're within the space. So there's been that influence there, um, and also uh, moving more to contemporary artwork. I was very moved um, during my time in grad school by the work of Ramiro Gomez artist from California. And about his work, um, one thing that was very interesting to me was uh, the, the cutout board, cutout board figures that he would place like in, uh, like installed in public places. And, and again, it's kind of like bringing this life to the subjects and like very, very visible. So within that and in my experience through our history and understanding the impact that making a large scale had on the viewer, on the space. Um, and also I feel that it just helps me to, to elevate my subject. And um, it kind of brings this kind of sophistication that for example, that Velasquez will bring to the portraits of like kings and you know, and all of that, that, that to me, I feel that I, that's how I, I want my figures to feel that powerful. And so, you know, I, I, and I think that was my first take on making large work because I really love what it does for the subject, for the viewer. Um, and, and I also, sorry, go ahead. No, is there <laughs> They're massive, like they are like full scale people, if not taller, they're bigger space. And then with the inches at the bottom where it's hanging, I mean, they're, they're like looking over you in many ways. Um, just right. like Velasquez's Las Meninas does in, in the museum in, in Spain, you know, it really does have that impact. And I have, I'm not even in the gallery. <laughs> <laughs> well I'm, I'm glad that you can see that uh still feel that through the images um but yeah yeah so that and I mean and I like you mentioned I go from little things uh, usually the smaller work that I do is is where it's uh, little pieces it, it's more like studies to me where I'm trying to figure something out and rather than you know do it in a very large scale or before I commit to a very large canvas, it helps me, you know, from my use of materials, you know, and not like halfway and be like, oh, wait, that color is just not gonna work. Maybe I should have thought it a little bit longer. Uh, so, you know, th that is very helpful. Like if I'm gonna do something very large, it helps to see some things smaller scale so that I can kind of like see what might happen. Um, and yeah, and I go between the two. So in are the smaller works in the show, those are studies. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. And you're comfortable with showing studies. That's interesting too, because this is, these are studies on a white wall or in a white cube gallery space in Dallas, right? So this is, it's, that's no small gesture to put something that is a study that is kind of in process in an exhibition. Like that's also really mm -hmm. subjective. Um, why, why that decision? I think that comes from two things. One, I feel that often you don't have people in your studio and there's from my, well, at least from what happened 
not in 2020. Yeah, and especially nowadays, is yeah, it's a thing of the past. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, yeah. So you know, there's that uh, that, uh, and now even less. But I think even you know, before any COVID, I feel that also there's just so much well, at least in my studio there's so much that goes on in here and and i and I, I don't see why not share it with you know with the viewer i think it's it's something to me the process of from starting an idea to going through the process of making decisions that that's a very beautiful um beautiful what's the word um it's a beautiful process that that goes on and 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 I and I and I love the pieces as of film. I think um, to see something, you know, maybe it's not exactly the final result, but just to see all of those little changes through time, I found just the process very beautiful and uh, and the pieces themselves very beautiful. So I have no no problem showing them. I feel that they should be seen, and I think they can offer the viewer. Um, you know, another angle to my practice that otherwise you wouldn't see unless you would come to my studio. I think it's also, I mean, that that idea of making something that is normally invisible, um, visible, which is such mm -hmm. an important part of your work mm -hmm. overall. I mean, you're doing it with the image of the people, with workers, with immigrants, with people in your family, making not only their labor vis visible, but them as people visible. Mm -hmm. And you're also reinserting the, I mean, just the the gesture of doing this through classical painting is a reinsertion of these stories into the conversation about art history and painting, um, which is kind of where where I want to, I want to lead us back into talking a little bit more about that, um, because I think that not only are you doing that in terms of the content of the work, but in, in the sort of exhibition practices of your work, this idea of making something visible again. Um, and yeah, I just want to go back to like talking about the, the biographical aspects of it and the fact that like you've become so comfortable to, to put these things out there in the space. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And, you know, it's been something that's taken me time <laughs> to become comfortable with um I'm I've, in the past I've been very much the opposite where I'm, I'm just you know through just my experiences I feel that they just made me a very quiet person and and I was like that for a very long time in all aspects of myself um you know not only with my art practice but I think um you know, I started to, for one, become more comfortable. And I think after saying my story so many times, like sharing it, I think the moment where I started to be more open was when I was in Seattle, because um, I just felt this huge support by everyone that was surrounding me. And, and then I started to experiment with the artwork and kind of getting more personal as well. And, you know, as, as, as I share those images of the figures in my paintings um i'm i'm sharing with the viewer the vulnerability and and i would like to think that i was also sharing my vulnerability as well with the people in my painting which is something you know that you don't see you don't see my interactions with you know the people that you see in my paintings and and there's this uh, beautiful conversations and moments shared with the people in my in my, my paintings and I think that and also feeling that you know what um, there's a lot of other people in my community that are scared to say all of this and and I just feel like it's my responsibility um, that I have this beautiful platform being an artist to to have people see my work, to have people hear my stories. And, and I think that has made me a little bit more braver to be like, I, you know, I want to do this not only for me, because it has healed me in a way. It has helped me heal from feeling very insecure, feeling very invisible. And I think it can also uh, help others. And that I think that's kind of has, is what has kept me going, you know, feeling that, um, that I hopefully all of this uh, can make a little bit of a difference um, for me and for others. I think that mm -hmm. that idea of 
the responsibility behind knowledge, right? Like we, we, once we become empowered with knowledge or empowered with, with our own security, then we also then take on a responsibility of, of, of sharing that empowerment, sharing that knowledge, sharing that security, um, offering safety to people, offering safe spaces to people, offering moments of empathy to people. Um, and that does become a responsibility in many ways. And, and that's, that's essentially what you're doing. And in many ways, not just, not just with the people that you are painting, which obviously is a course, like the, the, the intersection of all of this, but the ways in which you are an artist and choosing to make decisions as an artist, I think is really empowering as well. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I hope I can, you know, continue to just get stronger, 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 and more brave, more brave. Um, and, <laughs> but yes. Yeah. Congratulations on such a beautiful show. It's well deserved. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you. I appreciate your kind words. Thank you. So I did also want to ask you, you moved from Texas to Seattle and then you moved back to Texas, uh, which I imagine was another, another dramatic shift in your life. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk a little bit about coming back to Texas? Yes. Um, okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, and, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So moving back to, just contemplating the idea of moving back to Texas brought me quite the, the worry and um fear i'm not gonna lie i i you know i i, I begin to just you know uh, just reflect on how open i became when i was in seattle and i was very comfortable i felt that i was very supported and and i started in again 2017 so two years after 2015 2017 was itself surrounded by so much thing, so many things going on in regards to immigration that, you know, the worry never stopped. It just continued in different ways. And at, at that moment, that year that I was planning to return to Texas, it was a year that um, um, the current president was trying to end DACA. You know, and up to that point, DACA was like the only security I felt I had. Um, to the Trump era yes mm -hmm. yes and yeah yeah so yeah it was during that time and so yeah so it was like uh like for one I was like super uncertain about my future I'm about to graduate am I gonna be able to have a job you know if that got ends I wouldn't be able you know I'll have a degree but I probably wouldn't be able to do much like if because I, I was trying to pursue education like teaching as well so it was like you know and um, so, and also it was uh, talks of the wall, <laughs> a lot of talks about the wall and just people were getting to a point very aggressive. I, you know, from what I saw in the news now and then you will see videos of people attacking, not attacking, but verbally telling immigrants to go back home or like stuff like that. And it was like, oh, and Texas is just a more conservative state than Washington is. So it was like, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm making all this work that even though I, I feel that it's more about the humanity of the people in my community, it can't not be, you know, there's, I feel something that comes with it that can feel very political sometimes, uh, even though it's not my intention, but I think it's kind of like part of just the talking about immigration will have that, especially with the time. Um, so it was like, I don't know how people are going to take my work. I, I had, and this is probably just me be super dramatic, but I had thoughts of like, what if I have a show and people come and like set my work on fire? Like, why do someone, you know, things like that. It was just like, and then also. I think considering the time, considering the era, like those are normal thoughts to have, you know, like even in shows that I was working on around that time, it was like, what mm -hmm. if I get run out of town, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was real. It was hostile. It was real. People were sensitive. Um, yeah, it was real. Yeah. You know, and also like thinking my family is in Texas, like, you know, and thinking if I go with my parents out to eat, would someone yell at us while we're sitting down? You know, it was just little, it was just like on my mind, on my mind, but I moved back to Texas and, um, you know, I think I was, I felt very supported by my friends 
people I know, people I started to meet, you know, besides that, I wasn't, um, I didn't know many like artists outside of like Nagadoches. It was just like, you know, people that I went to school with, my whole professors, all that. But I started to meet other people, like, for example, like in Houston or like in Dallas. And I started to feel a little bit of support again. Not that it wasn't there, but I, I just started to, you know, uh, I just started to feel more connected with other people and more supported. And uh, thankfully, up to now, uh, nothing dramatic has happened. I'm very thankful <laughs> that, you know, that I haven't had a really bad experience um, now being an artist, making the work that I do here in Texas. I mean, just the, my community, my you know, my community is, is very large within Texas too. So I think that also helps to to feel not so so strange or like that I don't belong here because I look around everywhere and there's like you know my community is here and and they support me. <laughs> yeah, I mean Texas has a really incredible. Texas has many incredible communities of artists. Mm -hmm. and I think that. Um, one of the things that I've learned about living and working in Texas is that we're all connected in one way or mm -hmm. another. There's, there's very few degrees of separation. <laughs> and, right. and I think it's, um, it's also made up of a community of people that are just really supportive and really protective of each other and um, really want to have like the right conversations, you know? And so mm -hmm. it, it's one of those things where it's like the roots always seem to grow stronger in Texas. Yes. <laughs> you know, like it's, it, mm -hmm. it, it's really amazing to, to watch and really amazing to be part of. Um, because yes. like that, again, that's a moment of being empowered through your community. You know, like it's, mm -hmm. it's yeah, it's a really important part of living, working here. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And, and that's how I feel nowadays. I feel that, you know, I'm a part of a community now, many communities, you know, my community, but then also communities within art and then, and I feel, I feel happy. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So what, mm -hmm. like, what projects do you have coming up after the show and what's, what's on the horizon? Okay. So right now I am kind of within a transition within my work itself. Um, I've been making portraits that are very related to labor. And um, nowadays very interested in other aspects of immigration. Some of them is just families, family dynamics. Also kind of like um, looking into the history of someone that moves to the United States from what was their life like before they decided to leave their country? What was their journey like when they, you know, went through the process of moving to the United States and all the vulnerabilities that kind of happened within those decisions? I think there's so many layers to just those two, you know, two things. And I'm very interested on learning and understanding um, those experiences. And because I feel that they're very important themselves. I, I and they're very heartbroken as well heartbroken heartbroken heartbreaking 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 as well and it's just um yeah so that's kind of what i'm working on in my studio right now just trying to experiment with things also um you know the work that is in the gallery right now has this um is, is very clear there's this visibility that has been very conscious in, in the work because I, that's kind of like what I'm trying to do, bring this visibility to my figures in my paintings. And now I'm, I'm very also interesting on exploring um, or being a little bit more expressive with the way I render the figure and a little bit more loose and stuff like that. Um, and, and, and yeah, that's kind of where I am right now. Um, just I want to make more work and 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 see what happens. That's exciting to be in transition. Yeah. Yeah, it's really exciting. Mm -hmm. Um, but you'll still stay with like portraiture and representational work. Yeah, I think that's kind of where I am. And but I do I'm interesting on experimenting with the boundaries of that and um and yeah, and how how do I create something or how do I say what I want to say, but Maybe, I just feel like saying it in this, visually making it the same way, the same way that I would with the work that is in the gallery right now. I don't think that would be very strong. So I'm trying to figure out other ways to, to say what I want to say. But I feel that, I, from the way I feel is that it, it, something has to change, something has to evolve, and and that is very exciting to me right now. It's like, 
just investigating and experimenting here and there. Yeah. yeah. And well, I'm excited to see where it goes. <laughs> Thank you, Leslie. <laughs> Well, Arali, it's been so great to talk with you today. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Um, it was great to talk more about your practice and your process and to learn um, about, about what you've got coming up in the studio and to learn about you. And so thank you as well for being so open and willing to share and to share so much of your story. That's, it's not lost on me and I don't take that for granted. So thank you so much for that. Um, yeah, it's lovely to be here today. Thank you, Lissy. I, I loved it. and. Um... Thank you so much for listening to my story. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.